Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey, and here let's check out the top new games made with Unity launch in September 22. The reason why I make these videos is to show you everything that the engine can do, the only limit is really just your own skills and imagination, and the variety and the awesomeness of the games shown here really puts that to the test. This month it was super difficult to cut down the list to just 10 games, there's lots of really awesome games with thousands of overwhelmingly positive reviews. So as usual, that's awesome as a player, but also it can be quite tricky as a developer, the competition is really tough. All of these games are uniquely impressive, so the list is in no particular order, except for the number one game that is my personal pick of the month. Alright, so starting off at number 10, with a game that has been highly anticipated for some years now, Gloomwood. This is a old school immersive sim shooter with some puzzle elements and a horror-like atmosphere. It features an intricate handcrafted city with lots of freeform exploration, there's plenty of paths you can take and many hidden passages to find. There is a pretty hardcore stealth and sound system, so the enlightened world is accurately tracked, as is every movement that you make. The game certainly has a very well-built atmosphere, everything looks exactly like it should, dark and gloomy with some very sharp polygons. So basically, if you enjoy the original Thief games, then it sounds like you would also enjoy this one. Then, for something jolly, built with Unity and using the most famous IP ever, here is Disney Dreamlight Valley. Usually games built on non-game IPs tend to have trouble building something good, but it seems like this one really bucks that trend. The reviews are all positive, so if you're a fan of Disney then you will certainly enjoy this one. It's an adventure simulation game. You explore this world, go out on adventures with some familiar faces, the world has fallen into darkness and it's up to you to save it. But at the same time, no pressure, you can also just enjoy living in these worlds, go out fishing, gather some minerals and just walk around. Personally, I don't really have much of an attachment with Disney like some people, I didn't really grow up on it. But still, I find the idea of exploring all of these unique worlds and interact with all of these characters, that sounds like quite a bit of fun. Then if you like rhythm games, but you wish they were a bit more hardcore, look at Metal Hellsinger. The goal is to shoot enemies along with the beat of the music. So it's basically kind of like Doom meets Crypt of the Necrodancer. The music is all adaptive, the better you are at sticking with rhythm, the more epic the music becomes. Features lots of famous voices that you might recognize if you're into metal. And also one really interesting thing is how all of the songs are original and on the Steam page itself they mention that they went through the process of making sure content creators don't get content strikes. That is really awesome, very important to a game like this that is all about music, and I'm guessing it also helped some content creators pick up this game because it already has over 3000 very positive reviews. Next for something that just had its full release out of early access, here is Temtem. This one is a Pokemon-like, so you catch some monsters, you train them and you use them in battle. The main selling point is how it's massively multiplayer and you can play in either co-op or PvP, but it also features a story campaign if that's what you prefer. You explore these islands, find all the creatures, build up your own house and decorate it, you can customize your character and get ready for battle. So if you've ever wanted to play a massively multiplayer version of Pokemon, then this seems like the perfect game for you. Then for some VR, this month actually had one of the biggest releases ever, Bone Lab. For me, I'm pretty casual when it comes to VR, I mainly just stick with Beat Saber, but I've seen a bunch of videos that basically say that this game is about to blow up the VR world. The main selling point is their highly advanced physics engine. This is from the same developer that made Boneworks, which a lot of people also praise for their physics. And this one takes that and pretty much pushes it to the next level. So you can interact with all kinds of objects in ways that always make sense. And also the main mechanic is how you can swap out your character. So you can play as a tiny character to get around some small spaces. Then you can switch to a giant character which gives you a ton of strength to move some huge objects. And despite having such different character body shapes, the game doesn't seem to have any clipping, so whatever you do in real life matches the game regardless of the character size. Beyond that, the game is apparently built with modding in mind, so chances are that shortly after release you will already have tons of unique experiences all built by the community. If this one becomes something like Gary's Mod, then I can definitely see how this has the potential to really make VR blow up. And up next, here is the Wandering Village. This one is a city builder where you build your city on top of a giant creature which is also moving around. However, the creature is not really just a set of wheels, the creature also has wants and needs, so that certainly makes it for a very unique concept. That interaction with the creature sounds really interesting, you can either live in symbiosis and trust each other, or you can basically become a parasite. I'm very curious to try this out and see what happens if you take the parasitic route, so does the creature somehow fight against you or not, that sounds like a really interesting mechanic that you definitely don't see in any other city builders. As the creature moves through the world, you also enter different biomes, you must fight other parasites and survive some poison clouds, and of course it features an extensive tech tree. It also has a really nice style, mixing both 3D and 2D, so I quite like how it looks. 
And this one is yet another huge hit, already has over 1500 very positive reviews. Then if you're a fan of World War 1, here is Isonzo. This is from the same developer that made Verdun and Tenenberg. I played Verdun quite a bit, I even made a video on how it's made remaking some interesting unique mechanics. This new one is set in the Italian front. So in terms of visuals, everything looks really beautiful. The game is about war, but it's set in Italy, which makes the environment look gorgeous. And being about World War I means there's tons of old weapons, there's lots of bolt actions and some hard to use weapons, and of course there's tons of mustard gas. So if you're into this time period, or if you've enjoyed their previous games, then check out this one. Then for a game that came out of nowhere and blew up the whole internet, Trombone Champ. This one is a rhythm game, it's all about trombones. I have no idea why the characters are me's, but for some reason they match up perfectly. The game really has this very silly look. The background is also very nonsensical, I have no idea why there are horses everywhere, this is all very strange. And in terms of rhythm game mechanics, it also seems pretty unique. You have a vertical line and you move up and down and click to play. So in terms of rhythm games, very different from things like Dance Dance Revolution and those kinds of games. The game literally did blow out of nowhere. It launched with just about 5000 wishlists, so not too much. But now, all of a sudden, has over a thousand overwhelmingly positive reviews, so it has probably already sold over 50,000 copies in just two weeks, that is really insane. Up next, here's another huge hit with a gorgeous art style, it's Proteus. It's an old school first person shooter with both single player and multiplayer. The main selling point is how it's a retro look, but it's made for a modern era, and by looking at it, I'd say they definitely succeeded. The animations and sprites are all very old school, but all of the gorgeous effects, particles and lights, they all definitely make use of modern hardware to make something truly spectacular. It's non-stop action with tons of weapons and tons of enemies to defeat, there's lots of blood particles so the whole level turns red by the end. It even features community crafted levels, so if you enjoy the game you have thousands of hours of fun here. It just had its full release out of early access with over 3000 overwhelmingly positive reviews, so if you like this genre definitely give this a look. And at number 1 for my personal pick of the month, here is Slime Rancher 2. I must say that I still haven't played the original, it's been on the top of my to play list for many years. I know that when I do find the time to play it, I know I'm going to love it, it's going to consume about 50 hours of my life, and this sequel seems to build upon the original in every way. The whole game is all about collecting various slimes, then each slime does different things, so some slimes like a certain food and others need something different, and these slimes themselves also interact with one another. Some slimes reproduce one next to others, and some other types really just eat each other. So it's a game all about emergent gameplay. All of the slimes have their rules, their wants and needs, and all of those systems interact with one another. Personally, I love games like that, with tons of interlocking systems and some emergent gameplay, so that's how I know I'm going to love it when I finally find the time to play it. Also one of the best GDC talks that I've ever seen were by the developer of this game, all about making games that stand out and survive. I definitely encourage you to watch the talk, extremely useful for any indie game developer that wants to find success. The game has just launched into early access and almost immediately got over 6000 overwhelmingly positive reviews. So everyone is really loving this awesome indie sequel. Alright, so that's 10 awesome new games made with Unity launched in September 22. I hope this list helped you see how the Unity engine is capable of building anything, the only limits are really just your own skills and imagination. Let me know in the comments if you've played any of these or if there's any interesting systems in the games you've been playing. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.